working. That way. Great. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to uh, move on to the next lecture, and it uh, gives me great pleasure let's turn this down, to introduce Dennis Wright, who will be talking to us about the DNA signature of the doll Kosh. Um, and let me just get this up here on my screen. Get rid of that. And start that. Okay. There we go. Great. So, uh, Dennis has been involved in uh, genetic genealogy for quite some time. He was born in New Zealand, and his interest in genealogy began over 40 years ago, uh, following up family stories which led him back on his maternal side to Robert the Bruce, a Scottish and English, and ultimately European royalty. So we have a royalty in our midst today, so please respect that. Um, on his paternal side, he uh, has battled against an early 19th century brick wall uh, some 40 years ago in New Zealand, but in 2005 it was suggested that DNA testing may help him break through, and indeed it did, but to his surprise, he found his paternal ancestry was Irish and not English, as his name would suggest. So he started the L226 project, Irish Type 3 DNA project, and has maintained a DNA website on this Irish cluster for many years. He's also authored a paper in the spring 2009 edition of the Journal of Genetic Genealogy entitled A Set of Distinctive Markers Defines a YSTR Signature for Gaelic Dalcassian Families. And to tell us all about it, please welcome Dennis Wright. Thank you. Good afternoon. Um, the Y chromosome uh, is passed almost intact from father to son, and so shows the origins of a man's paternal line far back into the mists of time. So I'd like to talk to you today about the Y chromosome studies that reveal the STR and uh, SNP signatures of an old Irish clan, uh, the Dalclish, otherwise known as Irish Type 3. Before we go any further, uh, we need to define a couple of acronyms. An STR is a short tandem repeat, a short sequence of bases that is repeated a number of times. A SNP is a single nucleotide polymorphism, uh, a change in a single base. DYS is a numbering system uh, for segments of Y-DNA expressed as DYS followed by a number, e.g. DYS390. Now, a major Y chromosome grouping called R1B is commonly found in Western Europe, from Spain all the way up to Ireland, where some 80 to 90 uh, percent of men are R1B. A very common signature is called the Atlantic modal haplotype, and these are the values of the first 25 markers as tested by the laboratory family tree DNA. As more and more people submitted their DNA for testing, different patterns started to emerge. When compared with the Atlantic modal haplotype, one cluster had two glaring differences. STR DYS459 was 89 rather than the uh, 910, and DYS 464 was 13, 13, 15, 17 against 15, 15, 17, 17. I found these values, and an early, I found I had these values, and in early 2006, a researcher, uh, Ken, uh, Dr. Ken Nordvelt, stated that on a DNA forum that he had seen these values before from Clare, Limerick, and Tipperary. He identified those that had those values appeared to show a third Irish cluster. We say third because two previously identified clusters, namely uh, named on the geographical position where they clustered, the Northwest uh, Irish associated with Uniel, and the South Irish, which was possibly associated with the Owenach. So what should we call this cluster? Should it be West Irish or Thamond? I initially suggested Irish type three, and the name has stuck, and the Claude continues to be referred to as such. The first surnames that were noted were O'Brien, Casey and Crow. Where their origins were known, yes, they came from the counties of Clare, Limerick and Tipperary. As no one else was researching this cluster, I set up a website 10 years ago in December 2006 at the address you see there. 
As more and more results came in, studying the surnames, we found that the most common names were O'Brien and variants such as Brian and Bryant, together with Hogan, Kennedy, McGrath, Casey, Crow. When I studied the ancient Irish pedigrees, I came to realise that the majority of these surnames were Dalcassian and had a common heritage from around the year 900 AD. The principal Dalcase family are the O'Briens, the descendants of the legendary King Brian Baru. In mid-2008, calculations to determine the age of the cluster were made, which indicated this group was around a thousand years old, which lined up pretty well with the Irish pedigrees. A further calculation using Anatole Klyasov's methods in late 2014 on 336 haplotypes of 67 markers gave a more precise age of 1450 plus or minus about 150 years. That is, the most common ancestor of the Dalglace, who was L226, lived somewhere between 350 and 650 AD. While this indicated uh, the approximate time when the cluster flourished, considering how different the STR signature is from other clusters, it, get, it was uh, guessed that many centuries had passed since this branch had left the uh, main phytogenetic tree. Such an event is called a bottleneck, where a previous colony of several or many people reach a situation where only one male from that line has surviving male prodigy, and so all future members of the colony are descended from him which can mean that the progenitor of the haplogroup may have uh, lived much, much earlier, and so the haplogroup could be centuries older. Where the ancestral origins of my Irish type 3 matches were known, 85% gave Ireland as their origin, and where the county was known, Clare, Limerick, Tipperary and Cork amounted to 71% of those origins. Around this time, Sir Conor O'Brien, Lord Inchiquit, the O'Brien, Chief of the Clan, was tested and confirmed as being Irish Type 3. He is 32nd in descent from King, King Brian Baru, and this was further proof that this was indeed the Dalcassian STR signature. Several papers were written in the early 2000s attempting to uh, assign STR signatures to Irish clans. In 2008, Trinity College authors McAvoy, Sims and Bradley published a paper using just 17 STR markers, Genetic Investigation of the Patrilinear Kinship Structure of Early Medieval Ireland. It was published in the American Journal of Physical Anthropology. Since the Dalcliffe's uh, STR signature was by now well known, it came as quite a surprise when this paper stated they could find no distinguishable signature uh, for the ONR or the Dalglace. The reason the Dalglace DNA signature was not evident was because of the defining Dalcassian markers 459 and 464 were not among the 17 markers studied. As we have seen, the first 25 markers clearly show uh, the signature of the Dalglace and this had been known from early 2006. So I wrote a paper to the, that effect, a set of distinctive marker values defines a Y-STR signature for, de, for Gaelic Dalcassian families. And this was published by uh, jo uh, Journal of Genetic Teteology in 2009, um, and uh, you can see it there. So the, uh, the Dalcliffe STR signature had been established. And here is the full STR signature found uh, for Irish type 3 and compared with the Atlantic modal haplotype. It's quite a few differences, but the two major ones are 459 and 464. But the definition of a haplogroup is that it is a genetic population group of people who share a common ancestor, ancestor defined by a common SNP. In 2006, a SNP M222 had been found that identified the Northwest cluster the O'Neill. From then, Irish type 3 men had tested all SNPs available, but none were found to define our group. In November 2009, Thomas Cran, then of Family Tree DNA, proposed an extended SNP testing project called Walk the Y, where large sections of the Y chromosome, about 100,000 bases in total, would be searched for new SNPs. 
Several members of the Irish Type 3 cluster invested in the testing of one of our number, and a SNP L226 was found, and subsequent testing proved that this was the elusive SNP we have been looking for to define Irish Type 3 for the Dalkleish haplogroup. There are now over a thousand haplotypes, that is, individual test results, with Irish Type 3 signature in my database, and 870 are in the viewable database uh, there. The difference being haplotypes from Sorensen, Ancestry, and some surname projects that don't display the Ysearch ID or family tree DNA kit numbers that are used to identify um, each haplotype. We attempted to break the haplotypes into clusters based on STR fingerprints, which we hope would indicate branches that have taken place in the last 1500 years since the expansion of the haplogroup. However, because of back mutations and coalescence, different haplogroups are hard to identify with just STRs. <coughs> if, for example, we compare the DNA signature of my uncle and myself, we have a genetic distance, a GD of 1 at 25 markers, that's one difference, a GD of 2 at 37, and a GD of 3 at 67 markers. And this is over just three transmission events, and we have the same terminal SNP. But we also have two L226 men, uh, Real and Omani, who match exactly at 25 markers, that is, they have a genetic distance of zero, a GD of 2 at 37, and 4 at 67. This would indicate they are almost as closely related as my uncle and I. However, with SNP testing, they are found to have a common ancestor, have not to have had a common ancestor for a thousand years or 40 generations. That is 80 transmission events, 40 down uh, each line. This explains why attempting to fit all the Irish type 3 men into groups had limited success. And we needed to find SNPs to actually define each branch. In November 2013, FTDNA launched next, next Generation Sequencing, NGS, extending the concept of Walk the Y and calling this project Big Y. Full, uh, Full Genomes Corporation offered a similar test called Y-Elite. Both offered extended, extended SNP testing of the Y chromosome, with Y-Elite covering an even longer section than Big Y. While testing some 11 to 13 million bases, over 36,000 known SNPs were checked, but more importantly, novel uh, or new SNPs were also discovered for each participant. Initial results for our cluster showed some 20 reliable SNPs parallel to L226 in each participant. We have no way of knowing the order of the appearance of each of these SNPs, that is, if any or all of the SNPs originated before or after L226. However, further testing by other L226 uh, men may re reveal more in the future. In actual fact, just last week um, I've been advised of a person that seems to have one of our, the, um, he's, he's proved negative for L226. However, um, while, um, while DYS459 is different, DYS464 is the same as our group. So he may well come in partway down that list. We'll do further testing there. We then that noted uh, on those uh, first series of men, that there were at least two SNPs revealed branching under L226. Uh, In the first six men who took the test, FGC5628 was a new SNP that was positive, that is derived for five of the participants, but negative for one participant. This shows that this uh, SNP occurred after all these men gained the L226 mutation, and this particular participant had branched from the main tree very early on. Then, of the five men that tested FGC5628 positive, two men tested positive for a second SNP DC1. So this SNP falls below FGC5628 and represents a further branch. And a third SNP DC6 was also found parallel to that DC1. It was an exciting time looking through the lists of new SNPs that each of us had. Each person in this first batch tested also had between 5 and 21 private SNPs. But in the two years since Big Y testing began, 50 Irish Type 3 men have now been tested and there's been an absolute explosion of new SNPs found, many defining new branches 
the, but the majority being private to that tester, representing mutations since their line, LEPBL226 tree. So looking at the position of L226, under RL21, a SNP on the R1B tree that occurred some 4,500 years ago, we find the chain of SNPs leads through these ones here, DF13, Z253, Z2534 to L226. So when did we break away from uh, Z2534? In the past two years of testing, uh, we can count up and average the SNPs that have occurred in these 50 men since the bottleneck event. That is, ignoring the 20 SNPs that are equivalent to L226, we find it averaged 13.88 SNPs. When divided into the 1,450 years to the most recent common ancestor, we get a figure of 105 years per SNP. If we use the same 105 years and multiply by the 20 uh, phytogenetically equivalent SNPs, we get a figure of 2,100 years. So as the uh, most recent common ancestor for Dow, uh, Dow Clase lived 350 to 650 AD, they branch from the main tree around 1450 to 1750 BC, 3700 to 3400 years ago. We'd always wondered why the Irish type 3 signature was so unique and unrelated to all other haplogroups. But the fact that we have 20 SNPs in common indicates a long stem with no branching back to the place where the Irish type 3 left the Y tree. And 2,100 years, that's 70 to 80 generations, is certainly plenty of time for this haplogroup to de develop such a distinctive signature. Whether this origin occurred in Ireland or somewhere else, we've yet to discover, but may never de do so. However, this week uh, we found this particular chap who had some of the L226 and not the, not the rest of, uh, of our markers. Um, we'll be doing further testing on him, and that may well indicate uh, uh, where things have come from. Because this particular fellow uh, presently lives, so his line presently is in, is in Haiti, uh, but it harks back to, uh, to France, so it may well have started back there. Initial results showing two branching SNPs, but now the results of 50 big Y tests. We still we have some uh, 60 SNPs forming some 30 branches, as well as hundreds of still private SNPs. Here is a cha chart of the branches now discovered under L226, with reliable branches in green, together with four supposedly less reliable SNPs in pink, and two palindromic SNPs in cream. Even though this latter, these later SNPs, latter SNPs are considered possibly unreliable, they do seem to show consistency within the L226 tree. Sir Conor O'Brien, who is 32nd uh, in descent from Brian Baru, represents a confirmed pedigree back to the origins of L226. His line of SNPs from L226 comp comprise those that we see there. So this, we could say, is the uh, royal or senior line uh, leading from Brian Baru, born in 941, down to the present chief of the clan, born a thousand years later. The next question is, can a timeline be constructed for the royal line? SNP counting technique using the data from those uh, that have, have tested uh, positive uh, for each SNP allows us to construct such a timeline. This is so for larger data sets, but with branches with only two or three samples, giving a, give age results that are much less reliable. Unless, of course, we have good paper genealogy which can confirm the position. Descendants of two O'Brien brothers, sons of Sir Edward O'Brien, the fourth Baron Ichiquin, born 1800 1803, share a SNP FGC 13418. So this SNP uh, must have occurred prior to 1800, perhaps, say, around 1780. Naturally, there are margins of error of all of these dates, but it gives an idea of when each SNP arose. As Brian Baru was born in 941, he is likely to be FGC 5628. Some of these dates could be authenticated if we were to dig up a few of the earlier fells of Thermont and test their DNA. So this could well be a project for the future. <laughs> 
In the same way, approximate dates for other L226 branches can be estimated, again with the proviso that with few samples they give less reliable results unless confirmation can be achieved through known geological, uh, genealogical connections. However, estimating dates for a person's private SNPs cannot be achieved as we don't know in which order they have emerged. Now that we have identified many of the terminal SNPs below L226, we can then use STR mutations to further define the tree beneath each terminal SNP. Here we have a branch with six men that are confirmed SNP FGC12296 and a further 10 men expected to be FGC12296 based on their STR mutations. This gives even greater granulation than just looking at SNPs and Robert Casey uh, will be talking to this on Sunday. So what further testing uh, should L226 uh, men order? Well, an Irishman can be identified in the first 25 markers. So what should he test next? I would recommend extending to 67 or 111 markers because that will certainly help. And if you can afford it, the big Y test will identify all your private SNPs and perhaps show matches to other tests, testers' private SNPs, so identifying new branches. This year, FTDNA uh, have released a SNP pack designed expressly for Irish Type 3. It tests all the SNPs parallel to L226, all known branches uh, below it, and 56 private SNPs found in our L226 Big Y testers. These, of course, are only a small selection from the 300-odd private SNPs discovered to date and don't identify each person's own private SNP. They can only be found using Big Y or Y uh, Elite. The distinctive signature of uh, the Dalgleish lives on in thousands of men throughout the world, including my three sons and five grandsons. I'm truly proud to be part of this significant clan. Thank you. Great. Thanks very much, Dennis. Uh, fabulous uh, presentation, and you've done so much work. Uh, on the L226 project, the Irish Type 3. It's fascinating to uh, look at the history of the project and how it started off before we even had SNPs, exactly. when we had STR uh, genetic signatures. And it was your analysis of those uh, STR genetic signatures back in the days when we used to uh, sweat over a hot Excel spreadsheet uh, <laughs> for many, many hours into the early hours of the morning that allowed us to uh, identify this uh, DNA signature. Um, so questions for Dennis. Uh, has anybody got a question for Dennis? Yeah, we have one here from Theo Barry. Um, the work that um, I've contributed to, we've, I've been suggested to submit my um, uh, Y-DNA to um, Y-Full, that's a Russian testing app. Mm -hmm. Can you describe what benefit that would be or what they offer over and above, say, the um, um, big Y from DNA. Uh, yes, look, the, the results you get from big Y DNA, uh, they will certainly uh, try to provide some matches, um, but I find that most of my matches will tell me that, uh, oh, yes, they match you very closely, oh, but, but they don't match, uh, we, we don't share L226. Well, to me, that's useless because uh, we're going back uh, you know, 1,500 years at the very minimum. Um, YFUL looks at things more closely. If you don't have somebody in your project that will actually look at the, uh, at the raw data for you, the BAM uh, data, uh, then YFUL for, uh, for a small fee will look at it a lot more closely and fit you into, uh, into the photogenetic tree. I think the other big uh, advantage from point of view of Wifel, but I've done it for the Gleason project as well, is that it actually gives you a much more user-friendly uh, output than yes. the big Y results you get on family tree DNA. Um, it's much easier to see what SNPs you share with people who are closely related to you on the human evolutionary tree, on adjacent branches. It also gives you a much uh, nicer readout of your private SNPs as well. Um, whereas uh, the big Y uh, family tree DNA interface does not do that. Uh, you also get 495 STR markers. Yes. Now, I haven't done very much with those, 
because I think there's some... Uh, there's, a few, there's a few that don't quite line up, uh, <coughs> yeah. but in general, yes, that's a great number. The only proviso also that I would put down there is, of course, uh, any results are only useful if you're comparing them against somebody else, and not everybody by long chalk is submitting their results to I4. So uh, you haven't got as big a database to compare against. And yes, the other great big advantage of white pool is that it will actually date the SNPs. Yes. So it will give you some idea of the branching point, the branching time, when your particular branch branched away from the previous one. Yep. Thank you. Jared, did you want to? Uh, I've just that point. Great. Right. Okay. And we had a question down here from James Irvine. My question has been overtaken by the last answer. I was going to ask you how useful you think you will be finding in the future if you're not already doing it. The um, SDR, the hundreds of SDRs that, that uh, Big Y produce. Yes, I think. But before you answer that, and perhaps I could just come in with another aspect of the Y4 that I mentioned. Yes, it's very, the usefulness of Y4 very much depends on how many other people keep Very much. It. Mm. And uh, in some branches, it's extremely useful. And in other branches, frankly, it's hopeless because nobody stayed in. Um, and I'd also add that uh, FTDNA now with their improved haplot trees, the Y4 output is vastly more simple for the layman to understand than it was when we had to wait through the band data. Um, you and I, Dennis, have yeah. been through that. Yeah. Thank you for yeah. teaching me how to <laughs> wait through band data. I won't say it's now irrelevant, but uh, I think to most people, it's a shortcut with the vastly improved haplot uh, trees that FTDNA are producing. But if you could answer my question on the... Uh, on the STRs, yes. Yeah. Certainly, initially we looked at STRs, but as I say, because of back mutations and coalescence, um, they really did uh, prove to be uh, useless. But now that we have uh, SNPs uh, being defined uh, in much, much greater detail, we're now able, as you saw on that slide, uh, um, you know, able to, uh, to now look and say, all right, all these people have the same terminal SNP. Now let's look and see how those STRs have developed. And we can actually put a tree together now. And as I say, Robert Casey uh, will be talking to that on Sunday in a, in a much greater uh, extent. Um, he certainly moved further along that track than I have. Um, and so I think that'd be very... Do you use 37, I've been tending to use just 37 on mine, but please let's leave it to, uh, uh, to Robert. Yeah, that one. Any comments on that, James? Okay. Robert. We have a question down here from Jared. Um, yes, have, have you considered uh, uh, looking at the other royal family, which is the Kennedys? <laughs> uh, and, and bear in mind that we have um, uh, an ex-Lord Mayor uh, Kennedy from Limerick here in the front row. <laughs> no, we haven't uh, looked at that uh, at, at all at this stage. Uh, um, I think I think the, the you know. Some people are looking to make connections to, uh, to famous people uh, in various places. Um, other people are really just trying to find their own position and, uh, and their own close relatives. Yeah. In that regard, I'm going to just mention to people that here at the back of the room, we have a fantastic poster on the Barry family, oh, yes. which actually shows every single DNA marker of every branch of the family. And this was put together by Theo Barry, and it took him... I said days, he said weeks. So uh, a huge amount of work, fantastic poster, and there's another one downstairs. If you haven't seen it, please. Studios. If you haven't seen it, seen that, please do go and have a study of it. It's fantastic. It's absolutely, yeah, absolutely. Now we had a question at, uh, from, from Paddy, and then we go to Dennis O'Brien. Two very quick questions, really. I'm the administrator of the Care Roots Project for people uh, with roots in County Clare. So, so far I think I have 25 members who are L26, 226 positive. Right. And all I, of those... I better, check, have, I better check to make sure I've got them all as well. Yes, <laughs> all of those who have a SNP below that are also FGC 56, 60 positive. Is there anybody who branches all between L226 and FGC 56, 60? Um, yes, I think we have one there that's, uh, that's not, uh, not 5660, yep. It is pretty rare. It is. Yeah. And the second project I administer is the Clancy surname project. And Clancy, I think, is a good player, that fashion surname. There's a separate set up in Beecham with a completely different DNA signature. Mm. But most of the Claire Clancy's 
are now matching a large group of butlers. Ah. Butler now is a normal surname, which I wouldn't expect to have a Dalcashian there was uh, there was apparently a, a butler um, a princess, if we want to call it that, who married uh, a male O'Brien, and they were um, uh, O'Brien butlers for many years, and then the uh, uh, the O'Brien part was dropped. So it's quite likely that that's where that uh, connection came from. And where did the fancy branch on? I don't know. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> right. We have a question here from Dennis O'Brien. Not so much a question as maybe a clarification because I've worked with Dennis on this. Uh, this STR and uh, SNP thing has been really grinding with me for some time in the O'Brien project. And uh, it's only just now that we've got the uh, big wires coming through and we're saying it. And I've worked with Dennis on this. And we're re engineering. We're going actually backwards now because, as Dennis has said, once you've got the STP, what we've now found is off. Uh, there just happens to be some SDR markers that are unique, but before they weren't obvious. This was the problem. You had all these SDR markers that really didn't mean a lot, uh, but once you've got your STP locked, then you can go back. And I've actually done it with Connors, uh, and I've done it with my own family, and it actually, and I'll be showing it tomorrow night, but it's, it's quite interesting. But it, it's, some, it's, re it's going backwards rather than forwards. It's been quite interesting. Mm. Um, I think I've done the same with my Gleason project, and what I found is that the slips um, actually anchor the upper branches of the tree. Correct. And that's, once you've got that anchor there, mm -hmm. then the STO markers become much more significant and relevant. Is yes. that what you're finding? Yes. Well? In fact, there was another um, uh, branch. Uh, I haven't put a slide up for this one, but there's another branch here, very similar, uh, which is uh, DC55 uh, and uh, DC50 and DC55, and again, uh, when you look at the ones that are tested in green and then all of a sudden you can find all these others that are, are most likely to and you know you can almost uh, recommend that that person just test that particular marker and they're likely to uh, to fall into that place. And that's what Robert Casey will be talking exactly. about um, during his presentation. Oh, the fact that you can actually now look at somebody's STOR, um, well the, look at their matches based on their STOR yeah. um, yeah. Uh, profile and see what the terminal snips are of their matches and thereby predict what their own terminal snips Precisely. are going to be. Precisely, and, that, and this is the way I think we'll be moving in the next couple of years. Definitely, definitely. Um, any other questions? Okay, well, uh, Dennis, thank you so much for a wonderful talk. I know that you've got certain <laughs> members of your family in the audience. <laughs> you, you have a couple of... Uh, uh, my son uh, here and uh, two grandsons and granddaughter. Yes, so uh, there's another three that have the, have the marker. Yes. Excellent. <laughs> okay, well, ladies and gentlemen, Dennis Rice. Kennedy, I've got to say hello. <laughs> 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 nice to see you. Thank you.